Hello friends and uh, welcome to this sneak peek into exciting new development from Skahoy. The Bird Dog Eyes P200 camera will soon be supported by our range of PTC controllers. And uh, today I've decided to bring a PTC Pro, which is one of our most popular controllers. It has direct access to a lot of features like menu, preset recall, camera selection, and of course a joystick. So you'll see on this controller we have a large crisp OLED display that will show you all the settings of the cameras. And keep in mind that this is how our approach to cameras are. We already do the pan tilt zoom control of the bird dog camera, but we are not happy with only doing that. We want to access parameters like red and blue gain, for instance, in the white balance setting. And this is how far we want to go. We want to know exactly what features are in the camera and make sure they are broken out onto those displays you see in the menu on a PTC Pro. We also have a nice row of buttons which are usually used for camera selection, but not today. I redesigned the configuration to instead recall presets from them. So on the other side, we have the joystick and also a selection of buttons called uh, select. That section uh, is normally the preset selection and today it's the camera selector. So that's the um, Bird Dog ISP200 camera along with the PTC Pro. It's right here in front of me and we can get started. So we'll see. Um, the bird dog camera obviously responds to my joystick command, so I can move the camera like this. Um, in this case, I have speed limited the movement. So if I move it all the way to 100%, you'll see that I have fairly quick zoom, I have fairly quick uh, pan, I can uh, move around quite quickly. But if I want to have, you see, if I want to have more fine grain control, I can reduce the speed to like 25. Okay. Now it's really slow in the, in the zoom. I have more slow pan and tilt as well, and so forth. So we have speed control, we have pan tilt zoom control, I even have like homing if I press the top of the joystick, and then I probably want to recall some presets so we see a more clever picture. The flickering you just saw disappear actually comes because the preset has stored a deflicker mode inside of it. That's something I would have enabled later. But if we uh, move on, we can see we have white balance mode and exposure mode here. So uh, they are already implemented. And if I'm changing the exposure mode on the camera, uh, you're not seeing a whole lot of stuff right now, but you can actually see it change if we go into the menu. So let's try that. Uh, let's bring up the menu and you go into this one. You can see it's currently at full auto. I'm changing it to manual. We have shutter priority and we have iris priority right there. So we can change that around. This is also how far it goes because you can see that we uh, would like in shutter priority mode to access the list of shutter speeds. So, and that would be this list that I can browse through right there. So the thing is, um, implementing this list, yeah, that's kind of the next thing on our development agenda. And uh, we will implement the exact shutter speeds this camera has in it and break it out onto the display so you can see the speeds you see in, in, in the menu on the controller as well. If I move out one step and I can enter into the white balance mode, then we'll see white balance mode is changing here as I'm turning this dial. And we are currently in the auto mode, then indoor, we have outdoor, we have all the the, the settings this camera offers us, user mode, this is again obviously where we need to have access to the red and, and blue gain in the camera. If we go to these um, uh, outdoor auto, we have something called, is this sodium something lamp auto, a lot of complex modes. Again, this just goes to show that our PDC implementations will usually take those special modes of white balance right into the controller and show you in the display. As you can see right now, we already know these special modes exist and we show it on the display right there. Now, um, okay, let's just keep it here, exit the menu and take a look at the preset selector down here. So eventually this menu will be uh, all full of stuff that we want to control on the controller. We have a camera selector up here, but the preset selector down here will give us access to presets. I already had preset one recalled, so you can see this is another preset and another preset again and so forth. So in fact, the, the point of showing you this is a, is, uh, a look into how Skyhawk controllers uh, work and the kind of special features we are giving you. One of the challenges with presets is remembering what the preset is, but we have solved that by putting in OLED labels on the buttons. 
So you see the controller configuration I have over here. Those buttons that are currently not camera selected but preset selection has a function further down in the interface where I can set labels for them. So let me just see, I need labels and here I can enter a number of rows. So for as many cameras as I have, yeah, um, if I have three cameras, I'll enter three rows. And in, I, in this case, I have six presets. So I want to enter the, the label of six presets. Let's just do the first one. So for the first one, uh, or we could just take three. Um, for the first label, I want to put in total because I think that was like my total. Is it true? Okay, we say this is the total. And then we go to this one. And that's like the, the fight, the main fight. And over here, we have the... Um, the white team. So let's just try and save and see what that does to my preset recall here. Yes, and this also reveals a bug. I need to go bash my developers because it seems like they offset the, um, the, the labels for the preset recall. So total should really have been over here and fight should have been here and white there. And I can't tell you why, but you understand the point and uh, eventually it will of course totally correspond as it should. That's the super cool thing about Skyhawk controllers that you can assign your own labels dynamically to these buttons and guess what? If this was a camera selector and I had two of those cameras, when I changed to camera number two, those labels would be different. They would be picked from row number two on the controller so they reflect the presets on the other camera. That was your sneak peek into the bird dog camera development we're doing. We hope to show it to you at IBC 2019. Looking forward to see you, seeing you in Amsterdam.